Well, here we are at Rocky Grass for the Artist Works 606th anniversary party here, and we're just uh, we're just going nuts here. It's so great. We're going to be doing a big performance with most of the bluegrass. In fact, all all of the bluegrass Rocky Grass people. It's really great, and we've got a big capacious studio set up here where we're interviewing everybody we can find, and especially just amazing players, all the incredible musicians that come here to Rocky Grass. And so I just managed to snag one of my favorite fiddle players of all time, one of the best and one of the most fun to play with, Enyan Pelta, who lives here in Lyons. I shouldn't give out that information, but um, <laughs> they're in a hidden spot. You can't find it, so don't try. Um, but uh, Enyan lives here with her husband, Dave, and they have an incredible band called Tarka, which plays all kinds of string music from everywhere in the inner planets. They play music from everywhere, including their own original music. And uh, andy has been fiddling for a very long time. I remember meeting you in 19 something. 2001. 2001. That's okay. Yeah. Great. 2001. That's better. Although yeah. I've been coming to hear you for a while before that. When you were <laughs> one year old. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. And so it's great that I finally have gotten to snag you because I've been wanting to do this for a while. And, and here we Excited. are playing fiddles together. And I just thought, so you have uh, you have a five-string fiddle. I do. Look at this. This is a nice uh, one. Yeah, this is a wonderful violin made by John Sullivan. And there are only two of his five strings in existence. Um, Tati Hargraves has the other one. And um, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful fiddle I've had for 10 years. It's, this is its 10th birthday this year. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, it's just so nice to have such a full full range yeah of that's cool well let's play a tune and then we'll talk a little bit more because i want everybody to hear you and i'm i'm just gonna you know accompany and uh you just go ahead and go go crazy all right do whatever you want we were talking about a lovely new tune called the road to malvern is that what that's called? Yeah, yeah yeah this is an old time tune that um i've learned by playing in, in circles with some of the younger, the new younger generation of musicians <laughs> <laughs> that I'm privileged to get to play with sometimes as you are. You yeah, know, those kids. yeah, those kids, <laughs> these kids today. They're amazing. Well, it wasn't very long ago, only a couple of weeks ago, that you were part of that new younger hot <laughs> generation. Well, I, I, I try to fool them. But they just keep coming. They, it's just it's harder it's never going to end. <laughs> Okay.
<laughs> That's great with that extra little absent beat, the extra absent beat. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, as you were saying before we started rolling, um, it's got some relationship to uh, the Red Prairie Dawn, which is. Yes, it does. Yeah, that's it's, really nice. It's easy for an early morning festival brain to get confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Wow. Well, so how long have you been working working out on that thing? And you, did you did you start like did you like your folks take you to a bluegrass festival and and everything changed for you or was it uh, what happened? <laughs> well, I started playing like a lot of people, very very young, classical training um, in San Francisco. Um, but my my dad's a wonderful guitar, mandolin, occasional cello, viola player, self-taught musician who loves jazz and loves traditional American music. And um, so I grew up with this classical music on the one hand, and on the other hand, being forced to play fiddle tunes. Yeah. Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> against my will. Oh, my dad wants me to play it again. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I got the language that way, but I didn't develop, well, I loved, I loved listening to it, and somehow I didn't put two and two together that playing that music was something you could actually do with your life. I had always had in mind to have a career in music, but... Uh -huh. um, playing that stuff. You yeah. Know, that, that stuff... You know, I'd play it for fun, like, instead of practicing my concertos. But um, I didn't really figure out until after, after college um, when I met some bluegrass musicians and discovered that they were doing out in the world, making a living, doing something that I could do. Um, Very cool. I definitely, I went to bluegrass festivals and things as a kid. And it was fun, but I, I didn't find my way into the culture until mm -hmm. much later. Yeah. And of course, you are definitely one of that tribe of, of musicians who do not accept any limitations on what style music that you are allowed to play. You know? For better or worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's, well, yeah. Always, I always think that's the better thing, you know, be, but that's me, you know. But it's, yeah, it's amazing to, to watch you just, you know, sail through so many different styles. I know that you're. You're great with jazz. You've studied a lot of jazz and, and all these other, these interesting Balkan styles that uh, it's very cool or semi-Balkan. It's, it's kind of an interesting style is that that sort of music, there's a whole bunch of music now that is sort of connected somehow. Yeah. But not really, you know, it's not from there, but it's based on that. It's sort of like bluegrassy yeah like there's there's uh, people that are playing sort of Swedish sounding stuff a yeah. little bit so that's very cool so it's like an, it's another sub genre uh, yeah can you talk, talk, talk about that a little bit that's, is that, that's sure um, well there's I mean Balkan is such a broad term because sort of because southern goes. central Europe is you know, it's a big area with a lot of yeah. different cultural influences. And um, so my, my primary interest has actually been in the Romanian music um, and the Romanian music that comes from just outside Bucharest. Um, there are tunes that are played by the Roma, the gypsy people. That, mm -hmm live there and bands that you've probably heard of like Taraf de Hadouch um, uh, play these tunes which were traditional Romanian tunes that they've sort of adopted as their own. They've, they've sort, sort of, of they, they're, they're the, the, the owners, owners of, of this style, style of music that, that began as yeah. traditional folk music, music from, from the non-Roma, the non-Gypsy non people of this region. Interesting. Um, so so that's, that's sort of been an interesting evolution. evolution. And then that's, that's, that music has been very enchanting to people here in the States, States um, partially because of the Gypsy mythology, and there's also, in that, 
that musical culture that is a great showmanship. Yeah. Um, incredible virtuosity. And, yeah, yeah, incredible virtuosity. And, you know, it's, it's very flashy and fun, um, although my, some of my personal favorite music from that region is the, the laments, the doinas. Um, it's a little bit more like... Uh, you've, you've heard, heard the, the term, term Balkan, Balkan blues, blues but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's true. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's a classic. You know, it's just the whole kind of music that results from being in a bad situation that you can't get out of. You know, and that's some of the most transcendent. Of course, to transcend that, we make art. And yes, that's, that's what happens. You know. um, yeah.